All right, session is being recorded. All right, hope everybody's back. Um, do you see my screen, Environmental Monitoring Part B? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you very much. We got uh, ILM 310404CB, and basically, this is version 21. So, the learning objectives of this ILM, there's only a couple. Describe the role of government regulator agencies. Oh, yeah. We all love these government regulated agencies, that's for sure. Describe regulatory compliance with regard to environmental monitoring and the consequences of non-compliance. So basically they're saying they give us a regulatory compliance, what we have to do at our plant and the consequences um, if we don't do what we're supposed to do, the consequence of non-compliance. So um, this is pretty dry uh, ILM, however, it just talks about the roles of the government, the roles of the, the Canadian government, the roles of the provincial government, the roles of the municipality that you live in. <clears throat> so describe the role of government regulator agencies. Government regulated agencies are responsible for making and enforcing regulations on the environment pollutants for the benefit of the public. So they're looking after us. <clears throat> government ministries, part of a government department. So there's a whole bunch of ministries, um, forestry and land development, all there's just, there's just so many, so many of them. Independent agencies separate from government board members are appointed and selected from private and public sector. So this is, this is these are gonna be like our third party guys, right? So they're independent agencies, they're not part of the government, but they do help and report to the government. So government regulatory agencies, page four, um, obviously you see Canada, and then obviously you see the, uh, the province, and within the province you have municipalities. This looks like Edmonton because of these guys, what do they call that? Um, I don't remember what they call it, but all the plants and stuff that are there down in, in the River Valley. The federal, provincial, and municipal governments each have regulatory roles with respect to the environment. Provincial responsibility are given to each province and territory by the federal government. So the big boss, the federal government says, yeah, here you guys go. These are the rules that we want you to enforce and put in place and you can do whatever you wanna do with uh, um, beyond what we give you as far as responsibilities. Municipal governments serve local areas under authority of the provincial government. Um, municipal governments, they do lots of water, right? So they're uh, all the municipalities have water and wastewater for sure. Um, there's not a lot of industry in um, in the city limits, so municipalities just take care of. Uh, they don't really take care of a lot of um, industry plants and all that kind of stuff. That's more mostly provincial. The rules of the federal government, um, Environment Canada. The national rules are to do the research, uh, national leadership, uh, this slide's all mixed up, but protecting the environment, conserving Canadian national heritage, and providing weather information. So there's Environment Canada. Uh, Environment Canada research, they have climate change research, they have weather research, they have air quality research, and water, and nature. And then the national leadership, coordinating environmental policies and programs, managing use and uh, quality of fresh water, ensuring hazardous and oil spill cleanups. So here's the ministry agencies. So you have the environment, you have fisheries and ocean, you have the health ministry, transport ministry, and national parks ministry. On page five. Independent agencies, the National Energy Board. Um, sometimes you can't tell whether they're they're uh, government or not. 
but these these are in, in, uh, independent agencies. So National Energy Board, the Canadian Environment Assessment Agency. So National Energy Board deals specifically with regulations of international and interprovincial oil and gas pipelines and electricity transmission. So that's what the NEB does. Canadian Environment Assessment Agency works with National Energy Board to conduct environmental assessment under the Canadian Environmental Access Act, Assessment Act, um, used to predict um, effects of proposed initiatives before they are carried out. Alberta has two provincial uh, environmental regulation agencies. Provincial, Environmental and Sustainable Resource Development, so ESRD, and Independent, Alberta Energy Regulator, AER. So they have two provincial environmental re uh, regulation agencies. One is the Environmental ESRD, Environmental and Sustainable Resource Development. So that's our provincial. And then the independent in Alberta is Alberta Energy Regulator. <clears throat> so here's another graph. Or, so Environmental and Sustainability Resource Development, uh, ESRD. They have the Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act. So they do regulation, codes and practices, standards and guidelines. The Water Act is under there also, and they do the regulations, code practices, standards and guidelines, and the Climate Change Act, basically just the regulations. Documents, regulations written in legal language and contain rules which restrict or, or direct a particular industry activity. They also uh, list consequences of non-compliance, and we'll talk about the consequences of non-compliance uh, non -compliance later on in the ILM. Codes of practice, written, uh, written in plan, plain language, detailing the mandatory requirements for an activity. Standard and guidelines, air pollution standards and guidelines provide general procedural information for installation and maintenance of air pollution monitoring equipment and reporting data. This is where we come in. So our standards and guidelines, this is where all us instrument guys come in. Calibrating and testing, equipment performance specs, reporting data, quality assurance, and air quality objectives. So when I, when I take all these in here, that's backwards. That should be the other way around. All of these installation and maintenance guidelines are important to an instrumentation and control technician. So this is what we do. We do the calibration, equipment performance, reporting data, quality assurance, and air quality objectives. Air pollution standards and guidelines, continuous uh, emissions monitoring system. So the only thing different here now is CEMS, because it's just the SINCE system. They have their own code. The ambient air quality objective and guidelines, the air monitoring directive, so the continuous mon uh, emissions monitoring system established the following requirements for CMS, installation, operation, maintenance, and certification. When we talk about this, we're talking about our analyzer. It's talking about uh, our installation of the analyzer, operation, maintenance, and cert certification. Certification as well as whatever else we have to do to that analyzer, which would be um, your maintenance, your maintenance area would be your um, calibration and your drift. And, and part, part of it would be in the operation also. Ambient air quality objectives and guidelines. So this tells us contains a maximum acceptable concentrations of air pollutants. So how much are we allowed to put into the air? And believe me, <clears throat> the, uh, the government will stay just under these, but they'll produce as much pollutants as they can. Um, because it costs a lot to get rid of these pollutants out of the stacks. So it contains a maximum acceptable concentration of air pollutants expressed as an average over a specific time. And these, these are what we use, one hour periods, 24 hour or annually. So th these three uh, we'll talk about in a chart a little later. So air monitoring directive issued to, plant, to plants or, or companies who are required to monitor source emissions and ambient air quality. And anybody that does this is a CMS, Continual Emission Monitoring Systems. It states the pollutants and, and procedures a company must follow when reporting. 
So here again, here's our here's our hour average, our 24 average, and our 30 day average. And all these are parts per billion. If you can see that, you get 202 parts per billion of SO2, 12 parts per billion of H2S, and and well, this would be 12, uh, 210 parts per billion of, of uh, nitrogen and dioxide, but there could be NOx, nitrogen oxide too. Um, so the question on, on, on page nine, it looks at why is the ambient air quality monitor station alarming? So here's my station, here's my analyzer statement, my ambient air quality monitoring station, as so be it, and it's alarming. Well, the reason it's alarming is because these are this in this first hour, I've got 172 parts per parts per uh, billion of SO2, and I'm only allowed on um, uh, well I'm, I'm under the spec there, but I got 10 here, 10 here, 159. I've got I'm all over the the average for one hour on here, so this thing alarms. And normally when this alarms, this is just something uh, a plant upset or something happened to the plant. And all of a sudden, my uh, my parts per billion of these pollutants um, just rises, and that's why this is an alarm. So, all the average monitored pollutants are exceeding the one-hour average concentration levels. This is probably due to a plant upset. But even when this happens, we still have to report it and get back on spec as fast as we can. So you you compare these numbers to these numbers. These are over these numbers. So this is why this is an alarm. Wow. So surface water quality guidelines. I mean, you guys aren't going to have to remember all this. This is just for us to have a look at. And, you know, we're protecting aquatic life by controlling water pollution. And these are all the things that they are actually monitoring. Sub substance or condition here, um, category, uh, trace organics, pesticides. Um, you won't have to know any of this. Uh, this is just showing you um, what we're actually monitoring for. So there's an analyzer for every one of these things. Um, we don't go through all the analyzers. We just go through the ones for air ambient and mostly for uh, plants that are emitting. Uh, shaded areas are of interim. Um, so these areas here now, um, they're just the 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 government and the agencies are looking at that and seeing what they should be. No big deal. As I say, for this particular slide, it's just telling you um, the units. They're all in micrograms per liter, right? Because we're talking about water. Um, yeah, uh, you won't be asked any questions on this page. Additional function of the ESRD. So Department of uh, Environment and um, Sustainable Resource Development, which is provincial. Portable, uh, potable water regulation regulates the treatment of drinking water. The Water Act manages and protects Alberta rivers, streams, lakes, and wetlands. And Climate Change Emissions Act con uh, concerns the regulation of greenhouse gases emissions, which is CO2 and CH4. The Alberta Energy Regulator. Um, this here, these guys, Alberta Energy Regulator is private focuses on energy regulation for discovery development and delivery uh, in the following areas we got oil natural gas oil sands coil and delivery pipelines so that's what the AR, are is responsible for the are has comprehensive surveillance and enforcement process to ensure energy producers operate in a safe and responsible manner the municipality. So, <clears throat> when we look at the municipality, we're talking about like it's not it's not a lot on uh, on huge plants and stuff like that. But we have drainage, transportation of dangerous goods within the city. We have waste management within the city, wastewater and drinking water. So that all basically falls on all mun municipalities. These five things. Municipality governors provide local services in cities, towns, villages, and rural areas. Alberta Municipal Government Act allows municipalities to create their own bylaws to protect environment, public health, and public safety. But they have to be within the guidelines that is set out in, in the first place. So 
that's all. That's 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 uh, the first objective. Second objective: describe describe regulatory compliance with regards to environmental monitoring and the consequences of non-compliance. So this is a case where um, you're supposed to be monitoring the air, and you're supposed to be your analyzer is supposed to be working, and they find that they're not. Um, so you're not in compliance and they, they give you a chance to get everything proper and ready and, and working. And then if you don't, then you get sort of a, a fine, a monetary fine. Uh, and then basically if that doesn't work, monetary fines, then they'll put somebody in jail, according to this. <clears throat> so environment regulator compliance, the environmental and sustainable resource development regulates Alberta businesses with respect to the effect of operations have on the environment, such as air quality, surface water quality, and land contamination. So here it is here. Here's the Ministry of Environmental and Sustainable Resource Development. And they have the Environment Protection Act and they have the Water Act. <clears throat> and then they have the, uh, down here below them is an Environmental Compliance Assurance Program. So this is where everybody's looking out looking over your shoulder to make sure you're uh, performing properly uh, as the as the regulation stated so they have an inspection program if you are not uh if you're not performing they have an investigation program they have compulsory monitoring and they have a reclamation program also under them so inspection programs page 16 uh, it identifies and, and correct non-compliance. Emphasize prevention and education, usually unannounced to ensure program's effectiveness and credibility. Um, this unannounced part, um, it, it's not unannounced. <laughs> they, they always tell us when they're coming. So everybody, the, there's a whole big cleanup and everything like that. They give us, they say, oh, we're, we're going to be coming, um, say, March 1st. So. The two week, two last weeks in, in uh, February, we're busting our butts, cleaning everything up and making it work. Believe me, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but they, but they, they, don't, they can come on announced, but normally they'll tell you so that um, you can clean up your act, I guess. Inspection frequency depends on priority based on potential for adverse effect, compliance history. So if you did, haven't complied, and you're sitting there and, and um, uh, your compliance history is, is, is pretty bad, then they'll probably give you unannounced visits. Um, but so they, they, they focus on environmental performance and the last inspection date. So here's this guy's air emissions. This is guys doing the soil for leakage and this guy's doing effluent and groundwater. So those are the inspection programs. General inspection steps, explain purpose and plan behind inspection. Uh, inspectors identify any areas of non-compliance, uh, possible sampling of air, effluent, soil, water, and groundwater. I've never seen this, like there's, they say there's possible sampling of all this kind of stuff. Um, I've never seen them come and actually do it themselves, especially the inspection guys. Third party for sure, but not these inspection guys. So post-inspection meeting to discuss results, any non-compliance and follow-up requirements. So if they do find something that, 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 that's non-compliance, they'll talk to you first, and then uh, the companies will get it fixed, the plants will get it fixed, and then they'll follow it up. After inspection report is sent out, uh, in severe cases of non-compliance with areas of non-compliance, and a request for written follow-up is added. Investigation programs, investigations gather information to pr prosecute a, an offense. Uh, investigation may involve the following tasks, taking statements, securing physical evidence, search warrants, and arrests. So they're talking pretty serious uh, non-compliance here. So compulsory industry monitoring. So uh, the environment and, and uh, civil resource development it tells the plants what they must apply for and receive approval from environment or ESRD. So here's, here's the ESRD here. 
So we, uh, the, the plants put in applications, the approvals, they build and operate, and then they reclaim. Construct and operate a new or upgraded plant. They renew their approvals to continue operation and they reclaim the land afterwards. So that's some compulsory industry monitoring. <clears throat> if approved, the ESRD issues an approval, which may include environmental monitoring requirements for the following. So guaranteed, if you've got a stack, you're gonna get uh, stack air pollutants, your ambient air monitoring system that's outside the plant, your soil, uh, treated sewage for wastewater treatment plants, hazardous wastes, wastewater, groundwater, drinking water, surface water. Typically industries must submit monthly, quarterly, and annual monitoring data reports to the ESRD. And this is all, this is all provincial. So Alberta has nine quality monitoring zones called air sheds that contain ambient air monitoring stations provided uh, current and historical data, data on monitored pollutants. So I don't know if I can make this bigger, but you have it in your ILM anyway. Okay, so I can make this bigger. So you got Wood Buffalo, Environment Association, Peace River Monitoring Program, uh, Peace Air Shed Zone. You got uh, you got West Central Air Shed, Parkland. So anyway, you can see this on there, but Lakeland <clears throat> Fort Air Partnership. Th those are the um, air sheds. So we have nine of these guys here, nine of these guys. Reclamation programs. Reclamation returns a land that has been disturbed by industry activity back to its former or productive use. Is my internet have issue or team got disconnected? Yeah, okay. I was just wondering. I, I, yeah, my screen went blank too. I was just on a phone call, so I wasn't sure if class <laughs> was over or what, but it looks like it's yeah. still recording. So I think, uh, yeah. I think he might have just cut out maybe. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, no worries. I'll, uh, I'll send a message here and see if he at least can pick up a message. Hey, the yeah. uh, question. Question to a couple of you guys. I am reusing a couple of friends as uh, ILMs, but when we got to the labs, could I um, photocopy your guys' lab papers for 40, 50 bucks? That way I don't have to rebuy. 
I don't think there is any lab package. It's just the uh, ILMs. Because when I went in and bought my package at Red Deer, I asked them if there is a lab book or anything, and they said it's just the ILMs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I come from specific. there's no there's no lab package. You yeah, should be I think they'll just provide that once we go in for our labs. I do have a question here too. If one of you guys can um, help me out with here, I was going to ask Tim after class or after that video. Two seconds here. Do you does anybody know? Does anybody know how to get that number on your calculator? I can't figure it out. Which, Which is, uh, what are we on? Are you on environmental or what? Are no, you no, on? this is um, process controls. It's just, uh, uh, it's like, it's all that math crap. It's been years since I've done third year. So, I mean, you figure out your gain to that guy, and then you figure out your, uh, all right. Dead time. Yeah. Through that exponent number, and I have no idea how to get it. So, do you remember when you're looking at the graph, and there was that um, that tangent line that you had to draw through the graph? Yeah. So, if you look on that graph, you're looking at your ILM right now. I these are my notes. Okay. So yeah. When like you look at that graph. Um, that's that's how you get those numbers. So when you draw that tangent line, your dead time will be when that line intersects your um, original process variable. Yeah. So from where your process variable, say it's at 50%, and then as it starts to climb, and then your tangent line will cross that 50% somewhere because it won't yeah. land right on where where it starts to gain. So the time between where the 50% and your tangent line cross, that's your dead time. I, I get that. It's more implementing it into the calculator is what's screwing me up. Cause like- Oh, uh, it's not necessarily. So that's just your, that just shows what your, that's kind of how you write down your game algorithm, but it's yeah. not necessarily a, a equation that you put into your calculator. Yeah, that's what's screwing me up because, I mean, it's yeah. like you can tell the, the dead time is like 0 0.5 minutes right, and it yeah. comes from that. I, oh, it's driving me crazy. I'm yeah, to no, um, that, that whole algorithm that you're looking at isn't something that you would punch into a calculator. It's, it's mainly just to see what the process gain is. So it's okay. not that you know, if you have a dead time of 0.5 and your gain's 1.5, <laughs> So you'd have 1.5 e negative 0.5 over one plus whatever for your uh, for your um, uh, what's the other time? Uh, uh, like oh, your first order time constant, right? So that'll be whenever your line hits the 63, 62.3 percent, whatever. But anyway, oh, okay. so it's just it just shows you what the equation is so that you can see what's going on with your process but it's not necessarily something you have to write into your calculator and get an answer for oh, okay okay yeah, yeah i when when he brought this up like i hope everybody remembers like i took third year in 2017 so it's been a while yeah no worries yeah so and then the only thing that you would have to do uh and i think um uh, Tyler uh, went uh, into it with uh, our last uh, multivariable stuff. So yeah. those will have some equations in, but it's basically, so you'll take, you know, the gain of one process and the gain from another process, which is all those numbers. And then yeah. there is an equation with all those together to get answers for the actual dead time between the two of them and whatever. Okay. That's, that's okay. the only kind of math you'll have to do with those kinds of equation, uh, equations. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Hopefully. Hope. I mean, shit. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I am. I'm almost a hundred percent. That's. That's all you need to worry about. Well, like I say, it's been what four years since I've done it. I'm. I'm finding myself weekends, four or five hours, Saturday, Sunday, doing this shit because it's like this is very, very new to me. <laughs> like. 
So yeah, yeah, no worries, man. It's uh, yeah, I just I challenged third year uh, just before Christmas, so I've been off since late September doing all this stuff. And oh, my dad didn't have to teach me; I had to teach myself everything. But I passed, so I guess I taught myself enough, anyway. Yeah, well, that's good. At least getting it done. Cool. Yeah, okay. Exactly. But uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know what the heck to do about this whole uh, rest of my computer. Today. My computer froze, so I had to close out my windows. And when I came back, well, Tyler's not here, so I think internet just glitched there. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just lost uh, lost connection. So I don't know. He was almost done the presentation. Really. There was like I had like two more pages of notes, and I don't think he was getting into analyzers at all on this subject. Uh, yeah, no, I think the analyzer stuff was probably the first one, and then yeah, it looks like there's a bit of stuff on the last couple pages, but it's all the it's all basically the federal provincial yeah, exactly. government regulatory bullshit right so i think he gets more into the shit with the electromagnetic um the next subject there spectroscopic analyzers but anyways yeah i'll let you guys be yeah for sure i think i'm gonna sign off if he hasn't popped back yet i think i'll just no. read the rest on my own so cool Take it easy, guys. Yeah, you too, man.
Tim. Oh, how far did I get, Michael? Yeah, I'm your only student left here. How, did, how, how far did I get? Uh, everyone left. Uh, I know, maybe. but how, did you did you hear the whole thing? Nope. You, you lost a while ago. Um, let me see, part B. You lost after after the page nineteen. Hi, Damien. Hey. Where are you located? Uh, I'm in Benalto. Just kind of a little west of Red Deer there. Oh, okay. Yeah, what about you? I'm in Edmonton. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. How come so, you, uh, you like RDC it, better than some Edmonton schools or what? No, actually, uh, that was a very good story. I was trying to register in uh, Nate. Yeah. They won't allow me to do that online. So I have to show up in school every day. Oh. Uh, that's why okay. I, I I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I got good. I got uh, lots of kids. I cannot quit the the job and go to school. Yeah, not that's like you right guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are you are you uh, uh, still working or you you just take the full time uh, off? No, I'm taking the full time off. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be in person, so I don't know. I figured I'd learn better that way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I yeah. I tried that way too. Uh, I'm glad I I registered this one. The, the RDC uh, have this opportunity. I looked around. Yeah, no, that's good. You found it for sure. Yeah. How far away from uh, from your your town to Red Deer? Uh, probably about twenty minutes or so. Oh, that's yeah, that's yeah. No, it's close. Easy travel. Yeah, I my first couple of years I lived about an hour away. Oh, it's still not that bad at all. Just I don't know, it's not that bad of a drive. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty minutes is nothing. So I no. I no. even I even travel to from Edmonton to uh, Red Deer takes uh, average an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. 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 When I went to school, that was in a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, uh, you're just traveling every day. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, I was. Uh, I did a calculation. You stay in a, in a, in Canvas uh, plus the cost. I was thinking. Uh, oh cost yeah. Of, yeah. Even so, live in a week, still quite a bit. I was thinking just mm -hmm. travel every day. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you're still home early oh. enough, I feel like, so. Yeah. And whatnot, yeah. Oh, oh it's good. I almost get this done. It's the last year now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
Do you have dual ticket or this is uh uh no, this will be my first. Oh you you must have just graduate from high school, not very long then. Uh I graduated in twenty fourteen, so a little while. I started doing this in like twenty fifteen, so it's been okay. yeah, it's been like four or five years since I've done third year. <laughs> Oh, same to me. I posted yeah. on that I was supposed to get this done a couple of years ago. Yeah. Just yeah, did no, not have too. that time commitment. Yeah. Yeah, I was supposed to go last year and then my boss asked if I just wanted to work. So I did that. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, and then this time he was trying to get me to work again. So <laughs> that's it's good. Just time to get it done, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, get this done. Yeah. You have no worries at all now. Yeah. What about you then? You're working and doing this or what? Yeah, I keep doing yeah. that. Yeah, I, I got lots of kids, so I yeah uh, got to stay I busy. quit my job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I did the third year with Tyler as well. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do third year with RDC as well? I did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how far did I get? We lost you a while ago. You did, eh? Yeah, you after you mentioned on the page nineteen the ash shed. Okay. I wonder if it's still... uh, you talked about the reclamation program. Yeah. Um after that uh, kind of uh Gone. Kind of lost, yeah. Holy Not many God. left. Yeah. No, there's only, there's only, I was on page 22, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll check my, um, I'll check my recordings and see if it recorded or not. <laughs> I just. Yeah, what do you think, Demi? Uh, Demi is here as well. Hey. Yeah, no. About page 22, we made it to. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, and then it just shut down? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll check the recordings and see if it went through. <laughs> Just crazy. That's that's the problem with this online stuff. If 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 Blackboard shuts down on me or something like that, I'm hooped. Uh, I should your email. I thought should we resume the class? <laughs> yeah. No, I won't do that now. If not for three pages. Yeah. It, 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 it was uh, after 22. Uh, there's an example in there. Oh yeah, because there's yeah, there's not much left. <laughs> I'll send it. I'll send an email just to finish off twenty two to twenty seven. <laughs> but I'll I hope I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Sounds good. Thanks, Tim. Uh you bet you guys. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> we we lost. We disconnected. <laughs>